All right, so S&P pulled back slightly. Again, that S&P is trading between 1448 and 1452. There's, that's chop. Let's take a look at that S&P chart. I mean, look at this. Choppy up here. We're getting long tails all over the place. We have a long tail here. It's chopping around on the pivot. You know, this pivot is a support area for it. It tried to fake out to the bear side. It tried to fake out the bull side, right, with the failed the failed low, but not following through to the upside. Now, this is a 30-minute. It doesn't look like it's closing strong, but we still have a lot of time before this one closes, before this candle closes. We have, like, at least 20 minutes. You know, the general intraday trend on this thing has been bearish, yes, we can make that argument. But remember, you don't get distracted by this all the time. It right? doesn't mean it's going to continue doing that. This thing may fail to make a new low and reverse. Right? I just wrote an article, if you look at the blog, about conventional trader. A conventional trader looks at what happened and then projects it forward. The unconventional trader knows how to anticipate what's going to happen next. Right? You need to be able to anticipate. Forget what happened previously. Yeah, you can factor in a little bit, but don't think it's going to go forward that way. Things change. You have to know where those changes are most likely to happen. I operate you know, with that principle, and so does Andre. Their whole methodology is based on that. Why do you think that, though? What makes you say that? Is it just a feeling? Did you read some news? Or do you have something, you have a solid um, evidence or some kind of price action, technical pattern, something? What makes you say that? Because 30, 20, I mean, there's, there's really nothing in here that says it wants to do that. Nothing at all. If you can't give me three solid reasons, then you just bet you're trading on a hunch. Which, you know, you'll be right some of the time, randomly. But random doesn't make money. You know, what you need for this thing to get up there is a, is a really good push from the S&P. That's what you need. You know, and S&P is, is showing somewhat some possibilities as far as a bullish reversal, which is an argument on your side. But if that thing falls apart, this thing's not going anywhere. Our swing traders, what they do is they, they look at, you know, for correlation, they're looking at S&P, they're looking at pound dollar, they're looking at dollar franc, they're looking for evidence in there, they're looking to see where they are with their level and their pattern, they're looking at order flow. All these things add up to solid arguments. Arguments that they can take risk on. Okay, but you're not telling me what you're basing that on. You're just saying you think. But what makes you think? You're imposing your own view on the market. The market takes money from people like you. You can't impose your own view on the market. The market's going to do what it wants to do, not what you think it's going to do. Let's see what Mark says. There's still a bit of bearish space to fill. However, lack like of volume, I'm taking into consideration P and K. The euro may break upward. Okay. The market's giving me some technical reasoning. He's not basing it on a feeling. He's basing it on evidence. Lack of bearish, um, lack of a bearish strong, uh, strong bearish argument. That's what that sounds like. I mean, I see the argument in the S and P. I see the strength there. But if you're trading like on hunches like that, you need, I'm just being honest. You're never going to make money. You'll make money occasionally, but over time you will not. Because you're just imposing your own view. What we do is we, we listen to the market. We don't impose views. 
And the market tells us what it wants to do. And then we just listen. Yeah, like right now, the market is really not saying anything. We can view this as, you know, since it has run up off of that 29.50 low, and it's just kind of sitting up here, not selling off, we can view that as a lack of weakness. That's the, that's the only information I'm getting right now, is lack of selling. Because selling happens fast. So if there were sellers up here, we'd be selling a lot lower already. But there's also a lack of conviction in this market. So it may take a while if it's going to sell. Again, it's not, it's not an ideal uh, short-term trading environment. Definitely not. Trades are, are very, very slow to unfold, if there are any. I mean, the only thing that I saw this morning, actually, earlier, which I didn't even trade, was that I saw this low occurring, and I was looking at some of my information, especially my, my order flow. My volume stuff gave me a nice indication here that this wanted to go up at that point. I didn't do anything with that, because I was lacking the setup. But I knew one thing, not to be short there. So, my next level that I'm looking for, you know, as far as a short, is going to be the uh, 30 even.